Hello. In this video, we will be trying to build a sentence boundary detection system in PyTorch. This is an experiment in recording real-time development as a high bandwidth way to get information about the project out. So, Argos Translate uses OpenNMT for its main translation um, engine. Uh, it uses sentence piece for tokenization um, and then stanza for sentence boundary detection. So this is going to be what we're looking at today. Um, and if you're interested, there is a video that goes in more in depth um, about how Argos Translate works. Um, but, okay, so stanza, so um, the short version is stanza uh, cuts text into sentences. Um, so we get input text, stanza splits the sentences, and then it goes through the tokenizer and uh, then the actual translation. Um, so Stanza has really worked well for the project so far. Look at them. Um, so they, um, it's this natural language processing library. Um, it has a lot of features, um, including sentence boundary detection, which is what we use it for. Um, and it supports a wide variety of languages. Um, the issue is it's been causing a lot of issues for packaging um, and um, things of that nature. So um, for one, it's a pretty quickly developing library. I think it it came out um, within the last year or two. And because Argos Translate has a package system, we can't keep up with the updates. Um, so the we're stuck on a pretty old version of it. Um, so I'm worried that if they suddenly drop support, then uh, we'd be in trouble and wouldn't be able to train new models. Um, the other issue is um, if you look at the dependencies. Um, not seeing it easily. Um, it has a lot of dependencies and this has also caused an issue. Um, one issue is the um, uh, it uses PyTorch um, and PyTorch for Python which is what we need for Argos Translate um, is like an 800 megabyte download um, and so that's caused us all sorts of issues uh, We've had users trying to use it with a poor internet connection and can't download it or they have to like, wait all day to use it. Um, the other issue is um, for Snapcraft packaging. Um, Snapcraft, uh, which is one of the ways Argos Translate is distributed, um, it, for security, it mounts applications as um, as um, their own file system um, and stores them compressed and then decompresses them to run them. Um, and so this is great for security, but it means if you have a large application, it takes a long time to start. Um, so we can do a demonstration. Um, Um, so this is launching Argos Translate from the Snap Store, um, and you can see this is not a great start time. Um, we switched from the default compression to LZO compression, um, which is a uh, is a large or it's a less efficient compression algorithm that runs faster. Um, so it. Um, it gives us a larger file size, but makes the start time not quite as bad. But this obviously then makes network issues worse. Um, so, like to have a simple system to do sentence boundary detection without having to deal with this. Um, so, oh, the, the other issue I didn't mention the. the the stanza has quite a number of dependencies, and an unknown one of them is making it so that Py2App, 
is not able to bundle Argos Translate for a fully native uh, Mac OS app. Um, and so, and that, that would be a nightmare of a problem to solve. Um, so the goal today is to try to make a very simple um, sentence boundary detection system. Um, the thinking is to that so part of the issue now is the um, we package a stanza sentence boundary detection model with every single package um, this and so this is why we're in this bad situation with the out-of-date version of stanza so um, so I think it'd be nice to instead move to just one sentence boundary detection model that is in the main software itself um, to keep the actual packages simpler with just the C translate and sentence piece models. Um, and my intuition is that the it's a simple enough um, it's a simple enough um, 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 it's a, sentence boundary detection is easy enough that one model can just do it for all the languages um, so we don't have to deal with awkward um, awkward like having a, an individual module for each language um, this might get a little tricky if there are super rare languages that are very different um, from all other ones that uh, it wouldn't do well, but I think that's probably an easier problem to deal with and easier to upgrade. Um, so I think this makes sense to be built in PyTorch. Um, I don't know PyTorch very well, um, so this is at risk of devolving into me just trying to learn PyTorch. Um, I did this quick start this morning, and I copied all of this transformer code in. Um, this the right thing. Um, and but I don't really know what to do. Um, I was hoping that transformers would just be a simple thing where we could just point a transformer at it and tell it to predict for each character um, if it's if it's the end of a sentence or not. Um, but it appears to actually be pretty involved just to do something simple. Um, so this won't immediately solve the um, not having to ship PyTorch, but I think PyTorch has um, has functionality to. There's like a PyTorch script I was seeing, and they have a C++ system, and it seems to be the leading framework. Um, so I think it's likely to have the best support going forward. Um, but we just need to train a simple transformer model. Um, that, and the, the advantage of just doing this ourselves would be um, I can't find a good library that seems to be able to do it and we wouldn't have this issue of I think it seems like a lot of the natural language processing libraries have a lot of functionality um, where if we can just have our own version we don't have to deal with that. Um, okay so I ran, I copied in all of the, um, I copied in all of the, um, the, their code for a demo transformer. Oh, here's the URL. Um, and I was hoping, yeah, so this was much more complicated than I was hoping. Um, so, I some oh and I ran this um, I don't exactly know how to I don't know if it saved the model um, so I'm not exactly sure what happened there um, it did seem to train successfully so this transformers.py can serve as a template um, Okay, I guess I was hoping that would ha just have a useful output that I could start modifying. Um, but I think we should try reading it. Um,
Um, so let's see if we can just like look at this best model. Oh, so this will run the whole thing. Um, 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 um. Okay, I think we're gonna have to read this more thoroughly. Um, I'm not tension for that. Uh, Uh, we want the opposite of from scratch. Um, uh -oh. I've used his um, uh, I'd like Deep Dream and um, um, you know Style Transfer Code. He has his YouTube channel too. Um, these these are good because uh, these are often easy to understand, but pretty useful. I also um, recommend um, this video uh, from University of Waterloo. Uh, it's like a the best explanation of transformers I've seen, um, but we don't want to do that ourselves. So that is very complicated. Um, So kinda, we could probably port it to hip, but
Oh wow. So this is like a whole translation system. Um, maybe we could we could maybe hack this to just use sentence boundary detection. I thought about trying to use um, like open NMT and just train a model. Um, oh, I should also show um, um, so one other thing I tried um, so um, this was the initial plan that we would put these what I was calling special tokens um, and then train it so that the main translation model could um, the main translation model could train um, could also just detect the centrist boundaries, which this if um, so this didn't work. Um, but if this had the this would have been really nice because um, one the model that like you I think you want the language models to be as big as possible to maximize like vague understanding about the world, and so by combining them this would have let us use whatever like if we train a large like a big Eng English to German model and it can already do that translation it'll already understand a lot about the text it's looking at um, and try uh, so it would easily easily be able to identify sentence boundaries um, and so we try I generated a data set that was 10% in this form and then 10% in just the standard uh, translation data um, and the model uh, just wouldn't do it. Like it, it would essentially never work. Um, it seems to really struggle. So I'd um, also um, uh, um, sentence piece has um, 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 lets you lets you always tokenize one like token um, as one token in. So I, I enabled that for detect sentence boundaries, which I don't know if that helps or hurts, but to figure to give it a super clear signal about which functionality um, we wanted, but it just it, it didn't seem to work. Um, so I'm assuming at some point this might be possible if you had a model strong enough. Though I think if you had a model strong enough, the um, you'd want to be looking at longer. Um, longer pieces of text than um, longer pieces of text than individual sentences and so you wouldn't have a whole lot of need to be uh, cutting them up um, so oh so the, back to the original point though I considered hacking trying to use MN, open NMT to um, to do it which has the advantage that um, already super familiar with it. Um, so I guess if I as if I'm only doing one, um, if I'm only doing one model, I could do in. Okay, maybe that's the thing to try. Um, now that I'm thinking about this again, because it definitely makes more sense to dig into. The open NMT stuff than um, this this library. Um, my original thinking was that we would do a model in each a model for each language um, a model for each language and um, but if we're doing the one model to do all the sentence boundary detection, then it can be the Hundred megabyte um, open NMT one. Um, okay, so I'll actually I'll stop the video then, and um, this is gonna take a day to. Or no, I I can do the video of the getting the data set up, and then I'll have to stop it to try to train this model. Um, 
Okay, so... Okay, so this is our script for generating data. Um, and so I built a set of classes to um, uh, help do things like this. Um, so the base is iDataset, and everything just you can get the data, which is a tuple of um, a tuple of two lists of strings, which is your data, um, and so then um, you can, and then you can source them from all sorts of sources, and you can use the composite data set to combine them together. Um, and so like uh, the network one, you can just with one command download it, or uh, you, you can download them and then it will save it compressed. Um, it's, a little, it's not super uh, worked out now, but the, well, you can save them compressed, but it doesn't, you have to like make sure you set the directory correctly. Um, the, and um, yeah, and then there you can do them from files. Um, okay, so um, so we use that in this is bin slash argos generate data, um, and then I just have this toggle at the top debug, um, and if debug is true then I use this test data. Um, oh, what I was saying earlier about the having the right directory, I'll always run all of the training script stuff, including this command from the root of ON empty models. Um, so, oh yeah, so if debug's true, then we load these like short data sets, which are um, slash test data source. Um, it's just some some stuff so that it doesn't take forever when you're trying to uh, make something. But then if it's not debug, we use the downloading functionality, and then it'll save this. I think it saves it into the data folder. I think it's like data slash cache. Um, and the, so this was the sentence boundary thing I was just talking about that didn't work. Um, and uh, we're also putting this on hold. Um, yeah, so, but the point is to use this data set library to try to build features like this, um, and including the, um, so this is one we do use. This is capitalization. We had an issue where we couldn't deal with weird capitalizations. Um, so 
we just insert one percent of the data as being um, either all lowercase, all uppercase, um, or um, like kind of random, um, just so that the between the tokenizer and the model, it can understand um, still being able to translate things when the the cases are weird. Um, oh, and then if debug is true, we print um, the data set, which is like this example I just showed here. So you can run, if it didn't debug, you just run it, and then it prints what the data would look like, um, whereas otherwise it'll actually just save the data um, if you're trying to do, use it for real. Um, so... Um, so I guess we just, or so I guess we just reuse the sentence boundary detection code, um, but increase the length. Um, so yeah, we'll go back to, we'll go back to, uh, what I was showing earlier. Um, Um, okay, so I think we're just going to try this, but with um, this, but with 100% of the data, not 10%, and in a bunch of languages. Um, okay. Sentence boundary detection line equals. Um, so I guess this is uh, this code is very much a work in progress. But the current kind of way I've organized it is to have this data set, and then which is the the data that keeps getting added to. Um, so you have input data set which you can access at any point, um, and then data set starts as a copy of that, and then gradually things get added to it. Um, Okay, so sentence boundary detection length. Data length, data length. Um, okay, so this generate SBD data is generating it. Um, yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to trim this at all now. Um, we just want data set equals sentence. Boundary detection data. Uh, and this should be after capitalization. Uh, okay, so you have data set coming in, and we just want to convert it to sentence boundary detection data. Um, sentence boundary data set, generate SBD data. Okay, I, there's a copy method. Um, so. SBD data set equals. Um, and just do okay. Um, so copy is going to copy it and then. I saw just leave it in the composite data set. Um, okay. SVD to say this. We don't want this anymore. For this. Okay, so SVD data set is composite data set and it's a copy. Of, no, not a copy of the input. It's a copy of. Well, I don't even need to copy it. I can just. It's just. It. Oh, I guess. Um, 
Okay, no, I just want to... I just want... Um, I just want to take the data set with the capitalization and then run generate SVD data set. Yeah, okay. Um, data set equals generate SVD data set. Data set. Okay. Um, how does this work? I don't know why it's printing that it's a data set and not um yes. More explicit. Oh, yeah, that makes no sense. Uh, I've generally tried to avoid inheritance in the code um, because it can be error prone. So I think some of the um, data set, there's some places in the data set where it'd be nice to have inheritance, but it doesn't. So that might be the case here. Um, But it looks like I put it in the I data set, which I think this was the one I did just inherit. So let's target equals stuff that data. Yeah, I think this is what I um this is what I um so what is it printing? Argos train data set model. Object and this is weird. Um, it's a data set object. This doesn't override it. Oh, that's the issue. Slash data set. Um. 
Okay, there we go. So, um, uh, probably just ignore the tag ones for, but so detect sentence boundaries. Um, okay, I'm actually gonna make the data a little less weird. Um, Maybe they're going to be confusing. Okay. So, so the way this works um, is we just assume that the data set coming in is a um, it's just a series of parallel sentences and so what we do is to make the sentence boundary detection data I do detect sentence boundaries um, and so this is the special token that will be tokenized as one entity um, and then we put a sentence so source line one and then we assume so actually I should make this data um, more sensible for sentence boundary detection. Um, Just why I always run them from the root. Okay. So we insert this. Uh, we insert this token here, um, and then we do a line of text, and then we randomly grab part or more of some other lines, um, and then we expect the model to return the sentence up into the sentence boundary and then a um, this token which is also a special token so it'll be tokenized as one entity so this this seems reasonable um, so we need to collect the data now um, or I'll commit this uh, So I think I, yeah, so I briefly ran it uh, not in debug mode, so that's where these came from. Um, so in debug mode, it's nice and easy because you can just uh, run debug and um, you, it runs instantly. Um, okay. So I'm going to take a break here, but then when we come back, we will do collecting the data. <laughs> 